thank you, Mary, uh, Westchester Refugee Task Force, uh, Rabbi King, and the Congregation of the Sons of Israel. Uh, I am so happy to be with you today to share with you my experience of uh, Ritzona Refugee Camp, a place of pluralism. And uh, my colleague Shirley Fabre and I um, were there for about a month, and we recently returned. And we were volunteering with the Austrian NGO, Echo 100 Plus, um, where we worked for about a month in their warehouse. Um, and we distributed meals, clothing, shoes, hygiene items. And, um, uh, and I also provided interpretation services. And we traveled uh, to Ritzona Camp, uh, representing the Muslim Peace Fellowship. Uh, founded in 1994, the Muslim Peace Fellowship is the first uh, Muslim organization dedicated to the study uh, and theory and practice of Islamic nonviolence. And we also represented the community of living traditions at Stony Point Center, an intentional community of Muslims, Jews, and Christians that live together and work together engaging in peace and social justice work, and uh, we also have helped operate a conference center owned by the Presbyterian Church USA, which is across the river in Rockland County. And this picture here uh, uh, is part of the one with the, all of the pillowcases. Some of you might have seen that in the past. It was a Fellowship of Reconciliation project, hashtag Give Refugees Rest. And we would send pillowcases to uh, the 31 governors who didn't want refugees. Uh, exactly, um, Westchester County Executive, etc. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, th this past uh, spring, Stony Point Center had the the privilege, the pleasure of having Ariel Stein with us. And Ariel uh, stayed with us on campus as our artist in residence. Residence, and shortly after departing Stony Point Center, she moved to Greece to join uh, Jacob Plitman, uh, her friend who was serving as county director. And uh, then she made the call out to Stony Point Center saying that Echo 100 Plus really needed volunteers. The Assad regime, uh, as everyone knows, and Russia were decimating Aleppo and other areas of Syria. ISIS was regaining strength in uh, the eastern regions and had just taken Mosul. It was anticipated that tens of thousands more would be attempting to seek uh, refuge in Greece. So ECHO 100 Plus uh, is an Austrian NGO. It's, uh, it was founded in 2012 by four uh, Jewish women, a group of friends, uh, Austrian women with ties to Greece, which acts as a bridge between the refugees, UNHCR, uh, the Greek army, which is contracted with by the UN, and uh, international, national, and local uh, humanitarian relief organizations and private donors. And um, as an aside, one of, this, uh, one of the beauties of this uh, small, uh, savvy NGO is that it's not bogged down by layers of uh, bureaucracy, as are many organizations. So within a week of me applying, I was accepted and buying my ticket to go. And if any of you would like to go and volunteer here, please see me after. And um, I was kind of the oldest volunteer, and most of the volunteers were in their 20s or 30s, but I, it's not age exclusive. If you're willing, I'm sure they're happy to have you. So, uh, Bertone Camp was built on an abandoned military base an hour's drive north of Athens, and it was established in March of 2016. When Shirley and I arrived there, the mood of the residents was very high, as they were moving in the nick of time as winter was uh, settling in from uh, drafty, leaky tents. Um, and here is the demolition of those tents, and you can't really see it, but there's a sign there that says, Home is where um, where uh, my mom is. Um, to next slide, please. Uh, to ISO boxes, and we arrived to see this transition. Um, 160 ISO boxes were erected, and these are one-room, climate-controlled um, uh, units with a sink, 
toilet, and shower. And they can accommodate, although it's close quarters, up to eight people. And these were provided to Ritsona and one other camp by the United Arab Emirates, um, which held a um, very ostentatious ceremony uh, to inaugurate the occasion. Um, they actually gave children flowers to give back to them. And, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, while, while the residents were very grateful for safety and a roof over their head, many of them did express frustration and anxiety that they and their children would be destined to live at the remote house uh, outpost indefinitely. And they wished that the UAE uh, or any friendly country would offer to resettle them so that they could live normal lives. <coughs> and so today, uh, there are 57,000 uh, refugees in Greece, with about 5,500 of them uh, staying in UNHCR-created uh, settlements, and another 5,500 uh, staying in non-organized facilities. Um, for example, there's an anarchist area in Greece that lets uh, a lot of refugees squat with them. Um, and ECHO provides humanitarian relief at five camps and hot spots, uh, including Ritsona. And his volunteers um, uh, distribute three meals a day, hygiene items, clothing, and welcome packages. And we sort through boxes. It's really not very glamorous. It's, it's very fun to, you know, enjoyable to, um, you know, meet the residents and talk to them and share experiences and tea. But a lot of our time is actually spent through boxes that maybe you yourselves have sent. Um, and then we sort them and we put them on the shelves. Next and on the ground at the Equa Distribution Center, um, we're about 10 to 15 volunteers. Um, we coordinate constantly on our cell phones uh, via WhatsApp. Um, we were Austrian, German, French, English, Norwegian, Spanish, and American. And we were Jewish, Christian, and Muslim. Next one. On Thanksgiving, um, we prepared and shared a meal together. And a dear uh, Jewish Mexican sister, Mexican American sister, explained to our international group um, the occasion of Thanksgiving uh, and and the true meaning of Thanksgiving as a national day of mourning for Native Americans. And uh, <laughs> and, and and we shared in two other rituals. For uh, one of them was telling of something that we were very grateful for. And the other, um, the Jewish yard site, uh, a tradition of remembering our relatives and ancestors who have passed away, with special acknowledgement of the Syrian and other refugees in our Ritzona community who have lost so many friends, family members, and, and uh, neighbors. In the one month that Shirley and I were there, the census grew from 400 to 700. And we witnessed a terrible shortage of food, water, and other basic items. The Greek army had secured, by being the lowest bidder, the UN contract to uh, cater to all of the refugee camps in Greece. And as we all know, um, we get what we pay for. And uh, the meals were inedible, greasy, unappetizing, mysterious concoctions. And one day we witnessed what, what looked like last night's dinner pureed and reserved. Um, we had uh, next slide, please. And we had the most unpleasant task of rationing water, pita bread, milk, and other basic food items, which comprised an already minimal diet. Unfortunately, an NGO, uh, fortunately rather, an NGO called um, Ritz Cafe out of Long Island. Um, sometimes provided olive oil, flour, rice, and vegetables. And you can see this little girl clinging to those carrots. And don't, I mean, it would have been very difficult to take a carrot away from this little girl. She really um, was, was really excited about them. And um, uh, residents um, will borrow, a few of them will have cooking stoves, or they'll cook in a fire pit, or they'll borrow each other's cooking stoves to cook. And that was a way of uh, escaping some of the meals. And we also had a very difficult experience of turning away refugees who came to the warehouse in need of winter clothing, coats, and shoes. 
Many own nothing but the clothing on their back. And uh, it's the policy and practice of ECHO 100 Plus to make large-scale distributions at one time. Um, these would be to babies at one time, children, women, men. And um, th th these uh, would be to ascertain that everyone would have equal and fair access to the limited and rationed resources that we had. And it was a very difficult situation. Were we to give to one, others would notice that um, there was a new coat or pair of shoes on their neighbor's child. Or we would have many knocking, we would have many knocking on their, our door. Um, and this would give us little time to sort through all of those boxes and organize the distributions that everyone was waiting for. The best policy, which is in keeping with international humanitarian relief standards, is to be completely neutral, impartial, and transparent in distribution. And next one, please. But there are always exceptions. <laughs> like this little girl, uh, this little baby, um, one very cold December day, it was in its 40s, in the 40s, uh, this, she's a, a little Kurdish refugee, I saw her barefoot, and her mother came running up to me, and she begged me, please, can you give her a pair of shoes? And I couldn't say no. Um, my my uh, friend uh, Shirley, who traveled with me, she was um, met by a woman, a, a, a newly arrived mother, with a brand new baby who had absolutely nothing for her baby. So she smuggled her some, some uh, clothing as well. And soon the word got out that there were two bleeding hearts in the room. <laughs> but, that, but that was actually the case with most of the volunteers. Um, but I have to say it was extremely difficult. And I actually, in a way, was happy to go because it was, it was very, very hard with the food shortage and the clothes shortage to say no more than we were saying yes. And this, by the way, that's the little baby again with the sneakers uh, next to her mom and her, her matriarchal network. Next slide, please. And so um, we would, um, we, with, with ECHO, um, it's a very powerful leadership, um, the ladies in charge, and they were uh, negotiating constantly with the Greek army, with the UN, with the uh, International Organization of, of uh, Migration to get the food we needed. Uh, but these are cumbersome bureaucracies. And so with the population spike, next slide please, from 400 to 700, and it's accompanying challenges, Shirley and I, um, and the, 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 there's some refugees there uh, from Darfur, um, we, they're mostly Syrian, but we had um, them from, it, from many areas. Um, we, like all of the volunteers, were committed to doing our work um, with a renewed intention that in every situation we would treat each and every individual with utmost love, respect, and compassion. And in spite of the desperate situation of the camp residents, they were nonetheless grateful to God to be alive. They did not complain very little and um, they were very aware of their blessings. And after we left Ritsona on Christmas, uh, two of the camp's residents decided to express their gratitude to the local population for their hospitality, and they put together this video. Yeah, yeah. All right. You know, um, I, I'm really 
sorry to have to leave you without showing you these two YouTube videos, because actually they are the, the punchline of this uh, presentation. Um, oh, okay, great, great. Great. I will send them to, to Mary. One of two um, of refugees, two men, and uh, someone donated them Santa outfits. So they went into the town, the local town, and they distributed uh, roses with a little note, thank you so much for your hospitality. And then they went and they marched to the camp and it was like the Pied Piper and the, all the children were following them. And it was just such a beautiful, you know, uh, interfaith event, it was lovely. And um, the other video, which I'm sorry I can't show you today, is um, of uh, Ariel, um, who in invited us, and uh, her friend Jacob, they actually got engaged at the refugee camp, and it was a ceremony conducted um, by a young Muslim man, and it was attended by Muslims, uh, Jews, and Christians, uh, Kurds, and Arabs, and it was the most fun, joyful event. And so I look forward to sending you that video. So thank you so much.